In this video, I will show you how to make an exhibition of your work like this. To create the digital exhibition, you will need a suitable image with space on the walls to place the work onto, and a selection of images for the exhibition. To open the images in Photoshop, click Open on the left side of the welcome screen, or go to File, Open. I have all my images in one folder. I will navigate to this folder and select all of the images. To select all, click and drag over all the images. When they are highlighted, click open. The selected images are open as tabs at the top of the screen, just below the tool options bar. To view the images, click on the tabs. Be careful not to click the X, as this will close the tab and you will need to reopen the image again. I will change the workspace from Essentials to Photography by clicking on the Workspace icon on the top right of the screen. This will change the panels to give a better work area for photographic images. I personally do not find the Essentials workspace very efficient for photographic work. Next, locate the tab for the image that will be used for the exhibition background. Then, find the first image that will be placed onto the wall. Select the Move tool from the toolbar on the left. To place this image into the exhibition, hover over the image, left click and hold, while still holding, drag the image up over the tab for the exhibition. The image should change, still holding the left mouse button, drag down on top of the image and release the mouse button. If we look at the layers panel on the bottom right, we will see two layers, the background layer and the new layer for the image we have just dragged in. The layer name will default to layer one. I will rename this layer to something more suitable, such as landscape one right, as I will place this image on the wall to the right. I still have the move tool selected, so I will click and drag the image onto the space on the wall. Before I make any further adjustments to the image, I will convert this layer to a smart object. In Photoshop, it's best practice to work non-destructively. Smart objects preserve as much information as possible and therefore give you more flexibility for adjustments. As an example, before I convert this layer to a smart object, I will demonstrate the potential problem if the layer is not made into a smart object. If I scale this layer down to reduce its size and confirm this change, Photoshop assumes that I will be only using the layer at this size and its resolution is changed. The additional pixels are discarded. I would encounter problems then if I decided to scale this image back up at a later stage. The image is now low resolution and pixelated. I will go to the history panel and select the point before I transform this layer and make the same alterations, but this time with the layer converted to a smart object. To convert a layer to a smart object, Find the layer in the Layers panel on the bottom right. Right click on the right side of the layer and select Convert to Smart Object from the list. On the layer there will be a small icon on the bottom right of the thumbnail. This indicates that the layer has been converted into a smart object. If I now change the scale of this layer to reduce its size and confirm the change, when I rescale the image back up, the full resolution is preserved. The image looks good. To make this image look like it was mounted on the wall in the space, the first task is to scale the image to fit the wall space. To change the scale of the image, go to Edit, Transform, Scale. Drag one of the corners to change the scale. If you are using the most recent version of Photoshop, the proportions will be constrained, so the aspect ratio is consistent. To change the aspect ratio, hold the Shift key while dragging one of the corner points. If you are using an older version of Photoshop, this is the opposite. Next, we need to match the image to the perspective of the space. As I already have a transform active on this layer, I can right click on the image and select Perspective. I can then drag the corner point to match the perspective of the wall. 
I will need to correct the proportions of the image. To correct the proportions of the image, right click on it and select scale. Click and drag on the midpoint on the right side of the image. And while holding the shift key, drag to the left until the image looks right. If you are using the latest version of Photoshop, you will need to hold the shift key down when making the adjustment. If you are using an older version of Photoshop, you do not need to hold the shift key. If the perspective does not follow the top and bottom of the wall exactly, we can make a change to this by right clicking on the image and selecting skew. Skew will allow each corner point to be changed individually and allow you to make the image have a better fit into the space and follow the contours of the wall exactly. I'm happy with these adjustments, so I will now confirm these changes by clicking the tick at the top of the screen or pressing the return key on the keyboard. This image does not yet look realistic, so to make the image look like it has been mounted onto the wall, a shadow will need to be placed. To add a shadow, double click on the right side of the layer. This will then show the layer style window. On the bottom left of this window, click on drop shadow. If the checkbox is ticked, it will not show all the options. Make sure drop shadow is highlighted. Select blend mode to normal and color to black. The angle allows you to change the angle or direction of light. In this image, there is a window with lots of natural light on the left. To set the shadow, drag the layer style window so the angle dial is positioned over where the shadow will fall on the image. The angle allows you to change the angle or direction of light. In this image, there is a window with lots of natural light on the left. To set the shadow, drag the layer style window so the angle dial is positioned over where the shadow will fall on the image. Then left click and drag the dial to point in the direction of the light. Deselect use global light because the shadow for each image may need to be adjusted slightly differently. If global light is selected, all the shadows will be at the same angle. This would not be suitable for this image. Once the angle of the shadow is set, move the layer style window so the effect of the shadow can be clearly seen on the image and make sure the preview checkbox is selected. Then change the distance, spread and size until the shadow looks natural. Once this is set, click the preview checkbox to compare a before and after. The last adjustment for the shadow is to change the opacity to blend the shadow into the space. When you are happy with the adjustment, click OK. I'm then going to add the next image into the exhibition space. Click on the tab to show the next image and make sure the move tool is selected. Left click and drag the image up onto the exhibition tab. When the image is displayed, drag down on top of the image and release the left button. Position this onto the wall next to the first image. Rename the layer. I will rename this layer to Landscape 2 Right. Then click on the right side of the layer and select Convert to Smart Object. To match the perspective of the wall, go to Edit, Transform, Perspective. I will change the left side of this image to match the size of the first image by dragging the left corner points. Then adjust the right side to follow the perspective of the wall. I will then fix the proportion of the image by right clicking the layer and select scale. I will adjust the left side first to make a gap between the two images. By holding the shift key and dragging the middle point on the left side, then I will adjust the midpoint on the right side whilst holding down the shift key to make the image look as expected from the viewing angle. Right click on the image and select skew to make any minor adjustments to the corners if needed. Click on the tick in the tool options bar or press the return key to confirm these adjustments. Double click on the right side of this layer to show the layer style window and highlight drop shadow to show the drop shadow options. Photoshop will show the last user settings for this adjustment. As it is in a similar position on the wall to the first image, 
No changes are required for this layer, so I will click OK. Next, I will add a triptych to the back wall. I will drag the three images onto the exhibition image and rename each layer relevant to their position on the wall. Triptych left, triptych center, and triptych right. Then I will convert each layer into a smart object. To fit on the back wall, the images will need to be reduced in size. To change the scale, go to Edit, Transform, Scale. I will change the scale of this layer to estimate the final size and confirm the change. As I have converted the layer to a smart object, it is not an issue if I need to change the scale later. I will now change the scale of the other two images to match. The pink lines that appear on screen are called smart guides, and this helps align and match the size of the images. The smart guides also show the size of the gap between the layers. It is easy to ensure that they are even. If the images are too large to fit the space, they can be rescaled by going to Edit, Transform, Scale. And the size changed for each image. The next step is to add the shadow to these images. Double click on the right side of the layer to show the layer style window. Highlight the drop shadow to show the options. And refine the distance, spread and size. These settings will be less than the first two images because they are smaller and further away in the image. The angle for the direction of light will also need a slight adjustment. When I am happy with these adjustments, I will click OK to confirm the settings. I will now need to apply this to the other two images in the triptych. By following the same steps and double clicking on the right side of the layer to show the layer style window and highlighting the drop shadow, Photoshop will remember the last used settings for this adjustment, so I just need to click OK. I'm going to position one more image into the space on the left. I will drag the final image onto the exhibition image, then rename the layer and convert it to a smart object. To match the perspective of the wall, go to Edit, Transform, Perspective. Right-click on the image and select Scale. Once this is done, right-click on the image and skew if needed to match the wall. To apply the change, click the tick on the Tool Options bar on the top of the screen or press the Return key. The next step is to add the shadow. The shadow will be different to all the others in this image because it is placed underneath the window and it is in a shaded area. The light would be from above and the shadow would be softer. Double click on the right side of the layer to show the layer style window. Click drop shadow and alter the distance, size, spread, angle and opacity until it looks natural. The final changes I'm going to make are to the brightness on a couple of the images so they look better in the space. I will do this by adding a levels adjustment layer and clipping it to the specific layer that I want the change to be applied to. By clipping an adjustment layer, it will be a local adjustment affecting a single layer only. Without clipping the adjustment layer, it would be a global adjustment and change everything in the image. To do this, I will select the layer I want to change. I can locate the layer by either scrolling through the layer panel and selecting the layer, or with the Move tool selected, make sure Auto Select Layer is checked on the top left of the Tool Options bar. Then click on the image that needs the adjustment and it should be highlighted in the layer panel. 
Once the correct layer is selected, go to the Adjustments panel. If this is not visible, click the Adjustments tab or go to Window Adjustments. Click on the Levels Adjustment icon located here on the top row and you should see a new layer appear just above the layer that was selected. To clip this adjustment layer to the layer below, click on this icon in the bottom right of the Properties panel. In the Layers panel, there should be an arrow pointing down to the layer below. To make a brightness change to the image, left click and drag the midtone point to the right to make the image slightly darker. On the Properties panel, there is an eye icon. I can click this icon to turn the visibility on or off of this layer. This is useful for comparison and gives a before and after. Using adjustment layers is non-destructive and allows for further changes in the future. I will also apply a brightness change to the image on the right. I think it looks a little bit dark for its position in the space. I already have the Move Tool selected with the Auto Select layer enabled. I will click on the image and make sure it is selected in the Layers panel. Then go to the Adjustments layer and click the Levels icon to add a Levels Adjustment layer. In the Levels Property panel, click on the icon to clip this Adjustment layer to the layer below. The layer I want to adjust is hidden by the Properties panel, so I will drag the Properties panel to the left side of the screen. By moving the mid-tone slider to the left will brighten the image. I will move this until it looks natural in the space. Once I am happy with this adjustment, I will dock the Properties panel back. If any changes need to be made in the future, this can be done by double-clicking on the icon here in the Layers panel. This will show the Properties panel for this adjustment, and any further adjustments can be made. If a change needs to be made to a shadow, you can double click on the right side of the layer. This will show the layer style window. Then click the drop shadow and you will see the settings that have been applied and you can make any changes. The last thing that needs to be done is to save the image. I will save this image twice. Firstly, as a Photoshop file, which will preserve all the layers and adjustments that have been made. So any changes can be made in the future. To save the image as a Photoshop file, go to File, Save As. Select the destination to where the image will be saved to. Rename the image to make it easy to find. I will name this Landscape Exhibition Layered. Then select Photoshop from the Save As Type drop down box. Layers should be checked as a default setting which is important to have access to the layers when the document is reopened. Then click Save. Next, go to File, Save As, and I will save this file as a JPEG. A JPEG will be a flattened file, so you will not have access to any layers or adjustments, but it will give you a smaller file size which will be suitable for sharing online, ready for social media, websites, or email. Find the destination where the file will be saved to, rename the file, I will rename this to Landscape Exhibition for Web. Select the Save As Type to JPEG and click Save. 